Hey everyone, welcome back to my tutorial on the basics of Roblox UI design. In this part, we're going to be going over tween servers and animation with UI on Roblox. If you need some help or have run into any problems, contact my Discord server, our developer. Link is on the screen and in the description. Once you load up your place from last time, we can begin. So first off, let's go to view and over it, explore and properties. Now inside of start UI, we'll open this up and insert a new screen UI. For this part, we're going to be going into tween servers. First off, we'll just name this test too. So what we can do is, I'm gonna make a custom hover button. So for this, I'm gonna make a custom button. So you can make your button right now. I'm gonna make a frame and insert a button and a text. You can just follow along. button in the text just put a spacebar if you get confused there. Now we're pretty much ready with our button. We got our button in text and we got our button in the front. But it's got no effects. So now we're gonna add some effects between servers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the plus and insert a local script. We're gonna name this script animations. So first off we need to get between servers. So we'll do local Green service equals game going on get service green service. Now we need to make the info, so we'll do local green info one equals green info dot new. Now time, this is just how long the tween is gonna take. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just put 0 0.1 or 0 0.25. Then comma item dot easing style dot. Now we've got a bunch of easing styles right here. So, here's a list of all the using styles. We got linear, sine, back, quad, quart, quint, bounce, elastic, exponential, circular, and cubic. The ones I use the most is sine, linear, and quad. I recommend using quad because that's probably the smoothest out of all of them. That's what I'm going to use. Back in studio, I'm going to put quad, and we'll do eno dot using direction dot in out. You can choose in or out, but I use in out since so that's probably what makes it so smooth now we'll do local text equals good that parent dot text label and we'll do local button equals good that parent Then if we test it out, if we enter our mouse, then the text will turn black and the background will turn white. Or if you want to, you can change 000 to 404040. So choice. So then we can test it out and then try our button. Alright, so we're in game, got a button. If we hover the mouse over, we have our little animation right there. So that's basically what tween service is. Or it just, it just smoothly like changes the value of something. So if I look in here, go to players, play GY, test to frame. If we look at our background color free, just look at the value change in the properties when we hover over it. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna implement this button into our welcome GY which we made in the last part. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put this inside the main frame, and then I'm gonna resize this to the same size as the current text button, and make the position the same as well. Then we could just paste in the old script, 
into the text button. We'll name this close. And we can delete the text button. Then I'll just name this close. Now, how do we tween this GUI? How do we make it so it just doesn't pop out of existence? What we're gonna do is, if we just go into our close script, move this, and if you want, go back to our animation script, and then we can just copy these two lines right here. Paste it in. And then, if you want, you can copy the tween service line. This. Now what we need to do is, we'll do local frame equals Split, dot parent, dot parent, dot parent. And this one right here would be the main frame. Script, dot parent, dot parent, dot parent. Now we can change this to frame. And instead of background color free, we'll do position. Equals including two, dot new. And then we can copy this. Position is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So make sure you don't edit these two zeros because this is the offset. We need to edit, edit the scale. So I want to make it tween down. So what we're going to do is we'll do 1.5. Instead of 0 0.5 at the time, I'll do 1. And also, if you want to do this, you don't have to use tween service to create a position or a size in a GUI. This is, you can only, you can use this pretty much for when you're tweening a UI corner or a grading or a, or anything else really. And there's a simple way you can just tween position. So what we can do is we'll do frame, go on tween position, and we'll do using two and new. And then we can just copy this same position. Then we'll add a comma in here, and then in quotation marks you can put the easing direction, which is in out. And then here we'll do the easing style, which is that. Then. So here, time, time is one, and make sure your true is enabled. This is one thing that you can do, because like, this won't override, I don't think, but if you use this, you can override the tween. So I recommend using a tween position instead of a tween server. So we're going to use this instead, but this is an option where you can do it. And because we don't want the player clicking, like continuously clicking and close one, because then it will override again. So I'm just gonna disable this good. Now, if we test our game out and click close button, it should work. So let's go give it a try. Also, I'm gonna show you how to add a sort of background blur if you want to. Do. So, what we're gonna do is we'll go into lighting plus and add a new blur. So, inside this blur, instead of just naming it blur, we'll name it something like maybe. Let's do Vulcan Blur. So, insert, we'll insert a new logo script into the test frame. And we'll do game, we'll do local lighting equals game, colon get service, lighting, and we'll do lighting, colon wave child, and we'll do Vulcan Blur. Then, after that, we'll do dot size equals 32. Now, after that, Go to Welcome Blur, and then just set the size to 0. And then we can just still interact with our game. Also, if you want to, and this is just in the way, set this to set the enabled to false. Go to Local Script, and do Script, that parent, that enabled equals true. Then when we play the game, it will just enable itself. Inside the close button, what we'll do is we'll make our little tween info. So we'll just grab the slow line here again, put it into the close script, and instead of text, we'll do local lighting. Game so I'll get the item. Then we'll do then we'll do the local blur and we'll do the welcome blur. We'll do welcome blur equals sliding from um, wave child welcome blur. Now what we're gonna do is instead of text we'll change this to welcome blur and then we'll do size equals zero. And since everything is one second, what we're gonna do is we'll change instead we'll change back to quad. Now after that, what we can do is we'll do wait one since that's how long the screens are. And after that, we'll do frame that parent colon destroy. As that, it will destroy our screen GUI or delete it. Now we can just play test and see what it looks like. And here's what it looks like in game. We got hello, welcome to the game. I hope you enjoy this game. Click close to play. If you get it close, it will just tune out. Now, if you want to add some extras, what we can do is we can disable the core GUIs like the chat, the emotes menu, the backpack, and the health. 
that, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So inside of our local script that's inside of test, we can either local script like startup or something. So what we do is we we'll do local start dy equals game on get service star gy and we'll do star gy uh, set core gy enabled enum dot core gy type dot share comma false then this will just disable it so if we duplicate this four times this will replace chat we'll do playlist chat emotes menu and then we'll do the back part. so if we just copy and paste this into our post script make sure it's at before the destroy because then it won't work and then instead of false we'll do true and then it will enable all the core gy's and speed play. Another and another optional thing we could do is we'll do local player game players game colon get service players and we'll do local player equals players on a local player and we'll do local character equals player dot character. After that we need to get the human so we'll do local human equals character colon wave child human so what we can do is we come out walk speed equals zero and harm dot jump height equals zero now there's another thing since on mobile they'll still be able to see the jump button and they'll st still be able to see the uh, joystick so if you want to disable that we'll do local uis equals game colon get service user info service we'll do uis dot so we'll do if uis dot touch enabled equals equals true then uis dot model enabled equals true else end so now what we can do is we can just copy all this and put it into our close script after the wait one then we'll do model enabled false and then here the walk speed the default walk speed is 16 so that's what you can do and jump height is 8.2 but if you're using but if you're using jump power the default is 50 so instead change jump height to jump power but not only it's just jump height now let's just start the game and see how our welcome to ui works now here we are hello welcome to the game i hope you enjoy this game to close the play the close after one second now we can walk again but inside of the ui we could not walk so there's our little simple welcome to ui and that's pretty much how you can script inside of a GUI as well. There's all the things you can do. And here's a note. You cannot use scripts in a screen GUI. Well, in, a, in, a, in any GUI actually. Scripts are only used for stuff outside of um, screen GUI, inside GUI. So keep that in mind. Don't use normal scripts inside of GUIs. Make sure they're local scripts. If you want something to happen to all of the clients, you need to insert a remote event and then inside of a button you can just fire the client, then inside the service could service, that's a remote event, that on server event. So that's how you, if you want to make it a like server wise, like GUI, it's a very, basically you need to use a remote event. Then we'll do current. Uh, current direct case storage or remote events gonna fire all clients so keep that in mind and then once you've fired it to all the clients you just need to insert local scripts and then just do one server events for the remote events again so that's pretty much our little scripting tutorial for our little welcome gy in the next part we'll be going through one of my most highly requested things and we'll be going through how to make a menu gy a main menu so Stay tuned for that video, it'll be coming soon. So, I hope you enjoyed part 2 and learned something new about screen service and some of the other properties. Close, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.